Hey guys, welcome back to the course. So in this lecture, we're gonna talk about another common scenario that could happen in the worst case scenario. Uh, this is when you have a freelancer or a contractor, your outsourced firm, and they're consistently missing deadlines. Now, in general, if you're outsourcing, you need to know that you should be at least a little bit flexible with your deadlines. Um, and if you're really a stickler for time and when things get done, then you need to be working with someone you at least have a rapport with or someone you know shows up on time. Typically, when I do the $50 test, I like to give um, freelancers a real small segment of things to work on just to, of, of many other things, test to see how quickly they can get it done, whether or not they can match the deadline that they themselves have made. So if you follow the $50 test, you'll probably know whether or not this person hits their uh, deadlines or not. Now, of course, it can always happen that, you know, they did perfectly on the $50 test, but then later they have family issues or something else is happening that creates um, some tension with the deadlines. So first off, you need to understand if they are missing their deadlines, there's typically only three things in my experience that are happening. One um, is that they are having something like a personal emergency or they're having to spend a lot of their time elsewhere in life. It could be another project. It could be moving. It could be traveling. It could be something else that's sucking up their time. The second thing could be that they have overextended themselves in terms of the project. It's a lot more complicated than they thought. Um, and they're finding or that they're finding it's a lot more tedious than they thought. So their previous estimates of their timeline might be inaccurate because they're finding out that it's a lot harder. And the last thing is that you might just have a freelancer who is not particularly motivated to finish your project on time. This is the least likely scenario because if you did a good job of looking at their past work, vetting them, assessing them, and making a good decision about a freelancer, and you did the $50 test, you should know whether or not this person is mature and whether or not they're gonna run out of gas halfway through their project, or just from the get-go, not be serious about delivering on time. So the likelihood that it's just an immature freelancer, it's possible if you pick someone who has no reviews, they have no skin in the game, they might be even just testing out this whole freelancer thing and they realize halfway through that they just can't do it anymore. Um, the best way to get around this is just to do some basic vetting. Make sure you have lots of bid on your, bids on your projects and make sure you pick someone who has a track record. Now, dealing with someone who has an external life event, um, that's a lot trickier. You need to basically have an open communication with them if they're missing deadlines to figure out what it is that's causing them to miss the deadlines. And if they do tell you that it's a family issue, make sure that you're, you're skeptical. When I say skeptical, I mean it is very plausible that they have family issues. That does happen quite often. Um, however, those things typically uh, don't just come up out of the blue. And if they do, and the person's a good freelancer, they would have told you every step of the way. They wouldn't just tell you after you asked, why are you missing your deadlines?